Writers, in reading workshop, we discuss how stories have a way they usually go. But we learned that they usually the main character has wants, and something gets in the way of the character getting all that he or she wants. So characters encounter a trouble or a problem. Today we talked about how that character usually encounters a problem, has to deal with it some way, and that gives movement to the story, making sure the story isn't going from one event to another in a flat way, but rather each scene builds upon it, making it interesting. Let's take a look back at Fireflies. Fourth grade and I read this. Fifth grade, you're new to this, so I'm going to read it out loud. Follow along as I read. I ran from the table down to the cellar to find a jar. I knew where to look. Being the stairs, the jars were dusty, and I polished one clean on my shirt. Then I ran back up, two steps at a time. Holes, I remember, so the flies can breathe. I poked holes in the top of the jar with Mama's scissors. The screen door banged behind me as I ran from the house. If someone said, don't slam it, I wasn't listening. I called to my friends in the street, fireflies, but they had come before me with polished jars. You'll remember that when I read aloud fireflies, we talked about how the story went, how the events fit together, what, it is, um, what its shape is. If it were to be written up in an arc, it might look something like this. We might go to my arc... You're going to find this organizer in your writer's notebook. I forgot to put it in there. Sorry about that. So fireflies might go like something like this. The first part here in the exposition or in the introduction, we're talking about the external and internal features of our character. We know the narrator wants to catch fireflies. That's an internal feature. They don't really describe the external feature, but we would probably know that it's some it's a child or a kid. The next thing we would look at is kind of describing that conflict that our character is having. And in Fireflies, the character's conflict is he needs to find something to catch fireflies with. The next event would be thinking of how does the plot intensify? Well, he runs down the stairs and finds a dusty jar under the steps. So we're getting close to that resolution. The problem's intensifying. It is dusty, right? The next event, intensify the plot some more. So event one, we describe our character in a problem. He wants to find something, he needs to find something to catch those fireflies with. Event two, we're intensifying it, taking the next step. He runs down the stairs to find a dusty jar under the steps. That is a good sequence. That could happen right after event one that event two there. So what would be the next logical step is that he pokes holes in the jar for air bubbles. And then we need to get to our climax. This is the part where the story starts to have resolution. You're going to describe the character um, how the character begins to solve the conflict or problem. How did the character achieve that goal? So in this one, we see that Fireflies, he probably is watching the firefly lights fade in the dark and running to catch them. So going back to review, we introduced our character for the first part, the exposition. We talk about his internal and external features. So this is new to you, fifth grade. Fourth grade, this is a review, but this is a good review. So we know that our narrator, his internal features, he wants to catch fireflies. His external features, he's most likely a typical kid. The next part here, we're looking at event one. We're gonna describe his problem or conflict. Well, we know what he wants. He wants to find fireflies and catch them. What is in his way? He needs a jar. 
So what is in the way of achieving his guard, achieving his goal is he needs a jar. Why does that character want something? Well, he wants to have fun with fireflies. Event two, intensify that plot, add that additional story, make sure it makes sense. He's running down the stairs. He finds a dusty jar. He takes his clean shirt and he wipes it off. Then the next event we add to that plot, make it thicker, make it interesting, make sure it makes sense. We said he pokes holes in the jar for air bubbles. The last part of our climax here, how did he achieve his goal? How did we get resolution to the problem of finding fireflies? He watches the firefly lights fade in the dark and is running to catch them. That leaves us to the end, the falling action. The falling action is, how did it end? How did the character resolve the story? Um, did he learn something important? And we're gonna say, he let the fireflies go and enjoyed their beauty in nature. Did he get those fireflies? Yes. Did he learn something here? Yes, he learned that they're best out in the wild. So, when Jolie Brickenlow wrote this story, she probably thought about a boy catching fireflies and having to decide whether or not to set them free. She probably didn't know exactly what was going to happen page by page. And that's why we need to have these story arcs, thinking of how that story evolves over time. Authors always know that the trouble their characters will have to grow into and the choices they'll make, but they don't always know how it'll work out until they start writing. Authors know that somehow, in the midst of all that trouble, somehow there will be something that makes a difference. I bet Julie Brickenlow didn't start reading her book and realizing all these tiny details. She probably didn't know before she started writing that the boy would just let the fireflies go free right away. Um, that he would wait until they would almost die before letting them go. He learned that lesson. We are going to work together today to create a story map. And we're going to do that using the story arc organizer. So in your writer's notebooks, you'll see for unit one, if you're a fourth grader, unit two, if you're a fifth grader, will be this story arc. We're gonna do one together, and then I'm gonna cut you off on your own, and your expectation will be to finish your story map today. Remember, the first thing that we need to do is to start with a character who has wants or a problem Develop your character first, fifth grade and fourth grade, before moving on. Good luck.